Hey guys, welcome back. BBC Cat here, and this is the second part of our video showing off the bronze and silver teams playing Nightmare. So we've already finished the bronze team, and this will be uh, Nightmare on the Challenge. Yeah, Nightmare of the Challenge, which is currently Dawn of Justice Superman. So this is showing off a place where you could use your augments, like we mentioned last video, and just set showing that with all the new stuff they've added for you to make characters better, this is not actually too hard anymore. Yeah, and, and just to get it out of the way, because we, we, it seems like we say this a lot, and I guess it only seems like we, it seems like we say this a lot because we're we're saying it a lot, <laughs> is that you know the the most benefit you'll get out of the damage and health is where your opponents don't scale up. And it's not that there's any disadvantage, but just that if it's not going to be as useful, then let's take it somewhere where it is more useful, even if you're only doing challenges once a month. Yeah. Because there's not really a lot, a lot of content in single player that's going to get you stuck, except for uh, maybe the boss. Mm -hmm. Some Like, the last boss with uh, Arkham, isn't it Arkham Origins Batman? Yeah. Yeah, that people have had a lot of trouble with, um, and you kind of need the right gear set and stuff to beat him. And then there's uh, higher levels of the challenge, which is the only other area where I think people with a good team of gold characters, like at the point where you're getting Elite Sevens, right? And Elite Seven level 50 gold characters. The Nightmare Challenge where you have limited stats or limited characters that you're allowed to use is going to be the main prob place where you're going to run into issues. As far as single player. Ooh, he was actually pretty good. He got three hits off. Yeah, that was pretty good. I mean, I, I was surprised that Cyborg is actually useful. Uh, it is early on in Silver Only Nightmare Ladder. Yeah, this is the second fight, right? So I guess. Yeah, so the augmentations definitely are, are useful. I mean, I guess you really could. When you're talking like the top, top tier of the level 50 uh, elite 7 gold characters where you're matched up against the really tough guys at the end of it anyways yeah then augmenting damage and health will probably help a bit more simply because you're you're getting matched against really tough guys they can't at some point they can't go any higher right once they're yeah. max augmented you can't really get any higher than that that's sort of an exceptional situation Ooh, back girl Yeah, so unless you've got, like, the higher stat characters and you're bringing them all the way to the top, you're always going to be fighting guys who are better than you at the very end anyways. And by better, just stat-wise, right? Not, like, you won't be able to beat them, it'll just be harder. That's a distinction that is true in this game. Uh, a lot of games measure their difficulty by the stats of their, uh, the enemies that you're facing, and they let the AI be kind of the mitigating factor so that no matter how great they are, you can always be kind of better than them if you're willing to plan or willing to do this or that, right? And so, uh, I think this is, this is the same as those, right? It's harder to totally disengage from who you're fighting in this, because you can't really... Because right, their abilities are different, the passes are different. Sometimes their fighting style is a little bit different depending on how they're programmed, right? Yeah, but for the most part, uh, what it really is, is they just have a slider, right? Where they increase the enemy's stats compared to yours, right? And yeah, I'm not a big fan of those boss battles where the only difference really is... They have a huge amount of health or a huge amount of attack. Yeah, their stats are just way better than all your characters. I'd rather they were smarter. Yeah, which is, um, so, that is an issue, actually, with a lot of games, and it's not just with Injustice, it's with, like, all kinds of, like, AAA console games and stuff like that, right? But, uh, it does tend to be one of the shortcomings of a lot of games, mm -hmm. because it's really cool, uh, one game that really perfected this is, like, games like Dark Souls, where the difficulty comes from the fact that, you know, enemy attack patterns are tight and close, right? Right. Uh, you, you need to plan based on them, right? And nobody has a lot of health. The 
giving everybody ridiculous stats is not a huge part of the game. Even the bosses can die in like uh, not too many hits, like maybe even just like 30 hits or something like that, right? Like nobody is too good because their their stats are just really high. What makes them difficult is the strategy that you need to inject into playing against them. Mm -hmm. And it's not even the best AI, it's just really well designed AI so that its shortcomings are either helpful to the player, um, to allow you to exploit them, or just, you know. Alright, oh, in case people were wondering, I mean, it's seeing just signature gears. Yeah. All for basic damage boost, because that's really, I mean, if it's strong enough, that's all you really need. The specials aren't going to matter. Recharge him. Yeah, it used to be such a struggle. I guess the, the more important now is with, at least right currently with Dawn of Justice Superman, as far as the challenge goes, <laughs> is actually resetting it. Because even if you can finish Nightmare pretty easily with an augmented uh, character, you're still stuck at E2 unless you take advantage of the challenge reset to start again at standard difficulty and work your way back up again. Yeah. Which is kind of disappointing. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be so bad if that's how they were doing it. Part of the difficulty, I think, is with Injustice, at least, is that there have been a lot of expectations that have been set up because of the way things have gone before. Yeah. And that's all. In some ways, that's almost worse because if nobody had ever had the expectation that they would be able to buy more promotions in the store, then no one would care that you can't anymore. Yeah, yeah. The, the disappointment is actually worse than just never knowing. Right. Yeah, never having the convenience in the first place. And I think that's a lot of the. Uh, it's been a common thread through the complaints is that they. There's a feeling that Warner Brothers does isn't responsive, and that people are. I mean, it's it's probably fair criticism of the complaints that people seem to ha be feel seem entitled to having something really. There we go. Bypass this concept. Something really good, right? But I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I'm just trying to pay attention and not get knocked out. Yeah, but people already feel entitled to have this stuff, uh, even though most of them aren't paying any money for it, right? Yeah. So. And it, and it, it's, but it's true, but it, they also seem to be not doing a great job engaging their user base, right? Right, and allowing uh, obvious hackers to continue playing. People who have, and I guess there's different levels of hackers. I mean, some people won't agree with this, but there's different, to me, there's different levels of hackers, right? There's the hackers that just skip steps and get further in the game faster. And then there's hackers who do things to the game that aren't allowed. Yeah, like they artificially like alter the way that the game is supposed to be played. So people with higher than normal crit damage boost, higher than normal crit chance, higher than... Uh, possible special one damage, yeah. stuff like that. And I think, I guess, you can't, I, it's pretty fair and realistic to say you can't always make everybody happy. Yeah. But, oh, that was nice. Oh, because he cancelled it. <laughs> right, so that's one of the points of uh, Ultra Flash, we use him a lot, and we never demonstrate this because we, we hate losing, but if you use your special during his bullet time passive, you stop his bullet time passive. Which is crap. Yeah, you don't want to do that. But, uh... I honestly think that at this point, the best way to just increase the... the lifespan of this game is there's always ways to add content to make it, to give people a lot of stuff to play towards, right? And stuff that's expensive to a level where it would be, like, really hard to max out, right? which is what they've been doing with Survivor and stuff, stuff like that, right? Right. right. But um, what I think would make it the most interesting to continue playing, as opposed to just the most satisfying to continue collecting in, mm -hmm. would be uh, a little bit of a mix-up with the AI. And I don't know exactly how they would do that, but mm -hmm. I think it would make it a lot more fun to play. 
Like, even something as simple as, uh, having two different types of enemies. Having, uh, aggressive or offensive enemies, and then having defensive enemies, right? Uh, and then maybe, like, either just having them get played at random, so that different, um, matches would play out differently, right? Like, people would actually be playing like the tank. Mm -hmm. And then, potentially even the ability to set that character type when you're playing in defense, right? That would be really interesting and really cool. Because you'd be facing a bunch of different types of matchups, maybe, right? Uh, and so, even if that's totally back-end, and even if the user does not get to control that at all, I think being able to mix things up like that a little bit, right? And you know what would happen? People will complain, it's too hard. <laughs> And I, I don't know that I, I don't think that's actually a bad thing. I, I think well, here's the other thing too, which which is interesting to me, is that there are people who complain that uh, multiplayer is too difficult, or it's, or no, sorry, the opposite, it's too easy. That they win all the time, that they need more of a challenge, and then when they get more of a challenge, they don't really want it. Right, but even then, if you really want the challenge, you know what's easy to do? You make your team weaker. And I don't mean just pick weaker guys, as in your opponent's scale down. Take out your gear, yeah. Yeah. I think it's interesting sometimes to see how, really, how low can you go by lowering your gear score, or just using no gear, maybe. Yeah. And see, I mean, if you really want a challenge, but I think that's, it's funny, I mean, one of the things I guess we're doing, we're, we're just as guilty as it of everybody else, is that we're homogenizing all the opponents, right? Not all the opponents are the same, or sorry, not opponents, the, the complainers. Not all commenters and, and people are the same, but it feels like that you're seeing, it feels that way because you're, when you're looking at the forums, you're getting it from the group of people who participate, right? So there are different people that are complaining. I guess really it, it, it's the same old canard, not really canard, but more the same cliche that you can't make everybody happy. Yeah. You make it easier, people are going to complain that it's too easy, if you make it harder, there's going to be people complaining that it's too hard. You know what, I think, I've heard this suggested, and I think this would s not solve a lot of things, but would make it a lot better, is to take away defensive points. They did that in Mortal Kombat, that you no longer get defensive points, so the, the amount of points that you need to get into the top 1% or even higher is way more realistic, and you don't have to rely on the randomness of getting matched up against opponents, and what's not in your control is actually winning in a defensive match. So they stop defensive matches, you just don't get points from it. Yeah. That would be kind of interesting. Because then it really would be rewarding the people who grind and play like, oh, and if you didn't notice, um, I stuck in Harley Quinn, so I could, the last few battles in the ladder are a little bit harder, so that I'm just giving Joker a little bit of boost. Since I don't really care about the other two members on the team who aren't augmented. Yeah. And now you have an all Batman themed team also. That's true. There's a lot of Batman universe characters. And Catwoman is sort of that ambiguous. You know, sometimes she's against them, sometimes she's with them. I don't think she'd ever side with the Joker. I think sometimes she's against them, sometimes she's for personal profit. <laughs> That's true. But I guess the whole point of the Injustice universe, right, with all the alternate universes and timelines and all that stuff is so matches like this happen because it's like uniting against a common evil. Oh, the friend, the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Kind of thing, yeah, where it doesn't matter if you're on a side with somebody, if you're against, like... Superman fighting wars for the human race, then you are on this side, right? Or whatever. Yeah. So anyways, there we go. Well, wow. I, I should point out too, so for people who are wondering about the gear, because there's the Dawn of Justice gear, getting, finishing Nightmare, at the, for the Dawn of Justice Superman at least, you do not get his Clark Kent glasses. glasses. You get the Kryptonian suit. Which is the old signature gear. Yeah. So anyways, thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time. Komoda.